So I started um, my journey with God wanting to be a pastor. I thought this was the only way that I could glorify God, that I could go overseas and glorify God. So I did that. I was a missionary in China. I got to speak uh, in the underground church. I got to see thousands of salvations, got to speak uh, in arenas, got to watch God move in a massive way to the point where one day I go into the underground church and it's just this warehouse and there's people crammed in elbow to elbow like this. And it's cold, you can see your breath flowing. And all of a sudden, they grabbed me. I had long hair at the time and a beard. And they said, you look like Jesus, so you must come and preach. I said, what a compliment. So I went to the stage that they had there in the center. It was much like this. And there's people pushing all along the stage. And there's people all along the rafters. And I froze. And I stared out at the sea of people and I said, God, I need your help. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. And so my interpreter was standing there and he said, you can, you can go now. You can, you can preach now. And I smiled and I said, okay, <laughs> give me a minute. Okay. And about two, three minutes of silence pass, and he says, you can, you, can, you, can, you can go now. They're waiting for you. And I smiled, and I said, okay, <laughs> just give me a minute. And so I waited, and I stopped, and I just paused, and I said, Lord, please come. And I stood in the center of the stage with thousands of people there, and I said, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. And the Holy Spirit sat in that room. And then a man ran down the center of the aisle with a pistol in his hand. And he climbed up on the stage and he shoved a gun into my chest. And he said, You will put your Bible down or I will kill you. And I looked at my interpreter, and I said, you tell him everything that I say word for word. Bukwai, no, no. Hand me your weapon. Because the weapon may be formed, but it will not prosper, is what my God says. So he handed the pistol to me, the man comes to know Jesus. The whole place comes to know Jesus. And my life is wrecked. I wrote a book about it. I was so passionate that this was the calling God had on my life. The book sold almost 100,000 copies without even trying. It's missionary stories. It's my story. But then... God said, I want to tell my story, not yours, Brandon. So I go back to university in the States. I had left kind of midway through to go on this mission. And I get back in, and my mom and dad both had battled cancer um, before I left. And when I came back, it had come back. Their sickness had returned. And so I went to my professors, my religion professors, and I said, hey, my mom and dad are both sick. Um, just want you to know I may be taking them to the hospital. I'm not sure what this looks like. And my religion professor said, okay, no problem. Get your coursework done, and we'll go from there. I said, okay. Um, 
okay. Well, I was taking business as a minor at that point in time. So in the States, I'm sure it's the same here. You have your major and you have other studies that you do. So I was taking my other studies at the time. And I went to my business professors and I said, hey, just want you to know that I have this going on in my life. Every single professor, every single professor prayed with me and wept with me and said, Brandon, I'm so sorry that you're going through this. I'm so sorry that this is happening. I can only imagine. I have gone through the same thing. My mom, my father, over and over and over, the stories continued and continued and continued. And I remember going home that night and thinking, huh, my religion professors did not pray with me, did not say a single thing to lift me, but my business professors all showed me the love of Jesus. So in a moment, God's story began. So I changed my course, and I said, I don't think I want to be a pastor in the church. God has given me a gift. I want to be a pastor in the business world. So I took finance, marketing, finished my degrees, and then I went into banking. And when I was in banking, um, this is kind of around the same time frame, seems like some of what Ghana's going through now, but in 2007, it was booming. Everything was great. And in 2008, 2009, we had the Great Recession, and the world just kind of fell in on top of itself. But I was in the bank one day, and two men walked in. The man on the left, his name is Ross Perot. The man's a multi-billionaire, or was. The man ran for president of the United States in the early 90s. So, of course, I knew who he was. And then this other gentleman to his right named Calvin Peterson. Calvin B. Peterson was really good friends with Mr. Perot. The man also, when he passed uh, in 2015, uh, was worth almost a billion dollars, $980 million. And so these two men come into my office, and Mr. Perot speaks up, and he says, Mr. Hare, his little five-foot-three self, he's about this tall, a little southern draw. He says, I want you to teach me how to make $10 million. <laughs> I did just like that. I laughed. <laughs> and I said, you're asking me to teach you how to make money. He said, yes, sir. And I said, you know how to do that much better than I do. Why don't you teach me? And he smiled and he said, that's the right answer, son. He said, Mr. Peterson and I have been to a hundred banks in the last several years, and no one has given us that answer. But because you did, we are willing to teach you. So for the next several years, Calvin Peterson would show up in my office. Uh, he would walk with me and talk with me and teach me. He taught me things that pastors had never taught me. He taught me things I didn't know in school. He taught me about business. He taught me about life. But more importantly, he was a man of God. He taught me what it meant to pray for your employees, what it meant to be a business leader. The most important thing that you have to do as a business leader is this one word, and I want you to write this down if you can is be an intercessor. Be a prayer warrior. The very first meeting, Mr. Peterson comes into my office. Mr. Perot had something else. And he says, why don't you tell me the Brandon Hare story? That's my last name. So I began and I told him, I said, I was a missionary in China, I was held at gunpoint, had all these things going on and grew up, blah, 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 blah. And I really tried my hardest to puff up the greatest story that I thought had ever happened in my life. And he listened. He's 87, 88 years of age at the time. So as you know, most men who are 87 and 88 years of age at the time, they're not easily impressed. <laughs> They've lived lots of life. But he heard the story and he listened to the story. And he stood up. 
And he stuck out his hand. He said, okay, I'll be back. I give, I'd given him this story, and that was his total response. It was, okay, I'll be back. I, I, uh, I was dumbfounded. I was, I was speechless. I didn't know what to do. And so he came back in the next week, and he said this phrase to me. He said, Mr. Hare, son, you think you have to be a missionary to make a difference when God made you a businessman. Why would God make you a businessman and not allow you to make a difference for his glory? For his glory. And it sank in and it resonated deep inside of my bones. And I thought, yeah, yeah. I don't have to be in China to lead people to Jesus. Okay. The next time he came in, he had this box, this gift for me. And he slid it across my desk. And he says, go ahead and open it, Mr. Hare. I said, yes, sir. So open the box. And inside the box was this little tiny mirror. And on the mirror was a post-it note. And the post-it note read this. It says, when you realize the man staring back at you is both your problem and your solution, your whole world will change. Because God doesn't change. But when you realize the person staring back at you is both your problem and your solution, your whole world will change. The entire continent of Africa is filled with more resources than most of the entire world. The greatest resource that is untapped is Jesus. It's a resource that's prevalent. It's a resource that's everywhere. It's untapped. But I want that to sink in. When you realize the person staring back at you in the mirror is both your problem and your solution, your whole world will change because God doesn't change. 